Hi, this is Michael Vesey of Amazing FBA. Our sister podcast, the 10K Collective, is the world's newest e-commerce podcast. It's geared to the exact needs of six, seven, and eight-figure Amazon and e-commerce business leaders. It's actionable but focused on how to scale your business and grow really fast for sale or long-term profit, not short-term hacks. We have in-depth talks with real e-commerce sellers and experts in industries like sourcing, team building, and managing cash. To find us, just search your podcast app for 10K Collective. That's 10K for kilo, C-O-L-L-E-C-T-I-V-E. We are live on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Android, Stitcher, and Spotify to name but a few of the apps we're rolling out to. Or you can go to 10kcollective.com for show notes or to listen online. I hereby introduce to you, Mr. Michael Vesey. Hey there, welcome to Amazing FBA. This is your host, Michael Vesey. Today, I want to talk about the open secret to product research, creating a unique product, in other words, for dependable sales and solid profits or how to do that. The first thing to say is a lot of people, particularly this is aimed more towards people who are newish to the space, but also those who've been in it for a while and, and maybe struggling a little bit. And uh, I want to talk to you a couple of things that have come up recently in conjunction with, first of all, a couple of people who I think are doing the right things who are fairly new to the game and a couple of people I've spoken to, one of whom is a, an advanced seller who is reinforcing this approach and a an expert who we've had on the 10K Collective podcast, our sister podcast, which is geared to advanced sellers. But I think if you start off uh, as a new seller, but thinking in an advanced way, that's also useful as well if you're really serious about building a real business. So the first thing to say, product research is not the same as market research. Okay, Being product-centered and focusing on the numbers using tools like, for example, Jungle Scout, Helium 10 on Amazon is what everyone does. And the trouble we have on Amazon is hyper competition, which means uh, we have to differentiate. It's not a question of it would be nice. It would be a luxury. You can get to that at some point. We've got to do it now. It's not 2013. You can't just put any old rubbish up on Amazon and private label it and get sales and get profit. You may get sales if you push the price ridiculously low and you spend a lot of money on advertising. Guess what? That is not profitable. That's not much point. Amazon gains from that. The consumers gain, but we lose as the seller. So that is not a game you want to play. Instead, I would argue, as Andre Schapper on the uh, email marketing guru puts it, zig when they zag. So you need to have a different business model to create a different product. Or to put it another way, I think you have to have a differentiated business model to create a differentiated product. If you're purely doing the research like everyone else, then you're going to lose. So I think you need to do it not like everyone else. If everyone else starts on Amazon, get off Amazon. If other people are starting with numbers, then start with people. If people are, are using keywords as a start, then use uh, people as a start. And what do I mean by that? Well, do I mean that we should junk, you know, things like Jungle Scout and, and Helium 10? Absolutely not. I think they very much have their place. I don't think it should be at the start of your research journey. Here's a simple phrase lately quoted by Vern Harnish of the wonderful book, Scaling Up. And if you're uh, listening to this and you're an advanced seller, you're not really in the right place. You need to get over to our sister podcast, 10K Collective. Just uh, look for that on I, any Apple um, or any kind of podcast app, really. Ron. Most of them, 10K for kilo, Collective, C-O-L-L-E-C-T-I-V-E, Collective. But... I've been reading a wonderful book called Scaling Up, which at some point I'm going to do a podcast on, probably on the 10K Collective podcast, because it's for hyper growth, you know, highly scaling businesses rather than beginning businesses or startups. But he says, grow where you're planted. So I think you should really start with jobs, hobbies you've had, or activities of spouses or friends and family whatever it may be. Um, I had some great examples of that recent with some new clients who I think are off to a really, really great start. One is doing something in the sort of space where he renovates uh, properties because he rents them out as a, as a business activity, even though it's not his day job. And he's talking to a lot of people who do that kind of work for him and looking at the particular problems they have and developing a specific product to solve a particular problem which other products don't seem to solve. 
right? It's called a gap in the market. And it started with him having conversations with real people. Now, we did some analysis online using Jungle Scout and Helium 10, Helium 10 more for the sort of keyword search volumes and things like that. And um, any of the standard tools will do the job. I mean, those two are, are very good. I've used both of them. Viral Launch is also excellent, uh, which I also use. And we hope to be interviewing somebody from Viral Launch soon. Um, but the tools, broadly speaking, I'm not saying they're all exactly equal. I don't think they are, but they do a similar job. But he didn't start with the tools. He started with the idea. Then we went through the tools to ascertain, is there a good demand? What's the competition like? Is it beatable? And the numbers were important. But one of the most important numbers we looked at is the fact that the there is a competitor doing, I don't know, about 25, 35,000 pounds, so about $40,000 or something per month on Amazon, which is quite strong proof of demand. But it's got a 2.5 star rating. So people hate it. It doesn't do the job. So what he wants to do is simply produce a product that does do that job, right? So quite simple concept. And it didn't require a lot of numbers to come to the idea that this is a good plan because it's a bit of an open goal. Somebody else I was speaking to today at the beginning of our conversation is a mentoring call with a, a new client who has not sold on Amazon before, um, has something of a business background. He's got a, a partner, life partner who has a very, very passionate hobby and in sport. I'm not going to reveal any more about that. But there are people in the sports world who, you know, already hobbies for that matter, who get very, very passionate and nerdy about it. And within that world, there are a bunch of people who spend a lot of money on products uh, of certain kinds to do particular jobs and to solve particular pains. And outside of that world, none of us, myself included, before this conversation know that exists. That is a fantastic place to start. And it has so many advantages. Uh, first of all, you're going to care more about it as Seth Godin says about starting business, you've got to care enough to get hit. And he was talking about what his lessons were from having to play ice hockey as a kid. Now, Seth Godin is anyone who's, who's um, seen him talk is quite sort of nerdy character. He's not a big beefy guy who, who's going to be well built for ice hockey, I would guess. Um, so that's some, one of the bits of wisdom that I've taken from him. I think it's true. You've got to care enough so that when it takes months longer to develop a product than you wanted, when your kind Chinese supplier it shuts down over Chinese New Year and you weren't expecting that. So by the way, February is not a good time to order from China, just so you know. When the US Customs decides to hold your products for two weeks or the UK Customs, I've had both. When Amazon decides to put your products in quotes hazmat for a week because they think it's hazardous, even though it isn't, you know, most of these things can be sorted out over time. But if you don't have enough, if you don't care enough about the kind of person you're serving and the product you're developing for them, you won't care enough to stick around through those little peaks and troughs, which in the broader scheme of things aren't that important, but seem important at the time, right? So that's really critical, caring about your products without over committing to something, without checking that it's actually viable. That's not what I'm saying, but you should start with something you care about, right? This is about where you start. This isn't about having no process to filter ideas. Right? We'll talk about that in a sec. But the second head start you've got is you've already got knowledge. If your partner's been obsessively doing a particular sport or activity for the last 10 years, you probably can't avoid being bored senseless by him or her. So you know about it, right? You understand the customer as well. Another major advantage, which is critical. And you can literally talk to your future customer because they are in your house. If it's your spouse or if it's somebody doing up your house and you go down there and talk to the builders or the carpenters or whoever it is, if they're working on your property, you know, if it's somebody in your family, if it's a colleague who you're close to, you literally see them every week or every day or whatever it is. You can literally talk to them about your products. You can give them products and say, you're not trying to sell them anything. I mean, want to be very clear. Just say, try this thing out. I'm, I'm considering selling something like this. Um, what do you think? Get honest answer. So I think the, the simple thing is start with your customer. So even if it's not something you personally know about, do not start with a product and search for a customer. That is backwards. First, I think you've got to decide on your ideal customer and talk to them and find their pains and pick a pain. So it's what I call the PAP, the person and the pain, which is the first real starting point. Apart from a bit of quick and dirty retail arbitrage and setting up your business as a whole, that is the starting point of the PLP, the private label process that I teach. And that's uh, been out for about a year now. So it's getting needing needing a bit of um, renewal. So I'm going to be doing an offer soon to people um, for getting it much, much cheaper than usual, because then I'm going to go through and myself and my, my team are going to go through and renew the videos and, and freshen it, get it up to date. But this has not changed. This is, if anything, even more important than ever. Um, so the person in pain is the starting point. And I think instead of starting with a product and looking for a customer, uh, start on your with your customer and the pain and then develop a product with and for your customer. 
Uh, another example of this, a much more advanced uh, person that I've got in one of the masterminds has been working to develop a supplement for um, a particular activity. I'm not going to reveal any more than that, of course, out of respect for him. Um, but they are working with their customers. They're iterating multiple versions of this product. And they've got about, whatever, three or four versions now. And only now are they considering going into a launch on Amazon because they've really got the feedback from the customers. Yes, this works fantastically well and is, is pleasant to use. Um, so that's another hint that I'm definitely, you know, not talking on my own. It's not just my idea. It is, in fact, what the smartest people are doing. Um, so that implies at some point, custom manufacturing. You don't have to start with this. I think you can private label to start with these days still, but I think the, the time when you want to move into making a genuinely unique product, that is your formulation, if it's a supplement or your design, if it's a hard product, that time needs to become, you know, earlier in the process now because it is getting more competitive, but the people who are established on Amazon, and I'm talking about people who got established in the last two, three years, not decades ago, not, not years ago. Uh, there are two members of the 10K Collective Mastermind who started less than or fewer than three years ago and who've already hit a million dollars a month, a year run rate, which is an amazing achievement. I'm not saying this is typical. I'm not saying you should expect this as a typical result. I'm not saying that at all. Most people typically will do nothing. They will listen to a podcast, think, oh, that sounds like a waste of time, or possibly, oh, wow, that sounds really good. And then of that percentage of people, maybe that's like 30% of people, um, maybe a few will listen to a lot more podcasts, and maybe a small percentage of those will open an Amazon account, and maybe, you know, two, three percent of those will actually sell something. So I am not promising future riches. I'm pointing out what the great people do right and offering it to you as a model to copy, no more, no less. So custom manufacturing is a really critical thing that you need to be training yourself in more. One of the customers I mentioned who's just starting out on his Amazon journey, we're already really led by him, not by me, getting into the realms of creating a custom product. He's working with a custom uh, a product designer, which is very, very exciting. And I'm going to try and solve this problem that he spotted that people want this type of product, but the existing one just simply does not work and try and create a design that does work. Um, much more creative and exciting process, I think, than just picking a product off the shelf and private label obviously takes longer, a bit more money is a bit more risk, but you don't have to go plunging straight into, you know, selling uh, straight away with a custom product. You could always test it out with more generic type products, or if it's B, you can run off a few prototypes in the UK or wherever you are based in the USA and sell those. And there's a few ways of de-risking it and testing the market before you launch into full-scale production. But nevertheless, custom manufacturing, I think, is the way to go. So if you are serious, if you're already launched, especially, you should get yourself over to the 10K Collective podcast and listen to that episode with Ryan Schaffer of... Um, XK Manufacturing, um, because he's uh, been doing this stuff for 18 years. He's American, based out in China, so a unique perspective. And the last thing to say is um, don't start selling to, to profit. Yes, you should. In, in between, I just want to quickly mention Am I saying just have a bright idea and then go and get it manufactured? No, I am not saying that, right? Of course, you should use um, run the uh, marketing numbers first, right? before ordering, right? So you, you should definitely use tools like Jungle Scout, Helium 10, Viral Launch, whatever. Um, there's so many, you know, the Zon Blast, on Pages, on something, there's Zon something out there. There are so many, right? And, and I'm an affiliate for some, and I've spoken to others. A lot of them do a similar job, and I'm not saying they're all equal. We will at some point do a review of those. That's really overdue, actually. But what I would say is this, don't get obsessed with starting with analysis, start with an idea, start with people, PAP, person on the problem, and then develop the ideas, PIC is what I call it, pick, product idea creation. And only when you've got some good solid ideas and people in mind, should you then do what I call a PIE, product idea elimination, and see you know what's out there, is a demand, number one, and number two, can you get a piece of the pie, hence my abbreviation, that's my uh, little little memorable thing there. Uh, so yes, you should run the numbers, but then instead of going, great, that's it. Now I'm going to go off and get rich and make profit. Well, hold hard. First of all, don't start selling to profit. Develop things to learn first. The first thing is to iterate your product or at least find, find other ones until it's good enough for a private customer, private customer, meaning the person you know personally. So if you're private labeling, you order a ton of samples from China, for example, and you try them out yourself. And if they look completely rubbish, you just throw them away. Do not order them. It doesn't matter what price they are. So that means get to samples early. Do not negotiate on price for ages before you get a sample. That's backwards. Get the sample. If it's rubbish, you don't want it at any price. So first thing, get the sample early. Second thing is then... Um, 
you need to think about uh, getting somebody else to test it who really is your end customer. And uh, you can go through quite a lot of different products that way, and that's fine. So, you know, order 10 different products, throw three away because they're rubbish, get the best three that are left and, and give them to your friends and say, right, test them out, give me feedback. Uh, and then you can iterate that up to a slightly broader level if you've got a bigger set of, of stuff. Um, I had a client for a while who ran a gym, for example, and he's perfectly placed to go to his guys there in, in gym class and say, here's some equipment, test it out for me, give me your feedback. Um, you know, as long as he makes it clear that, you know, make sure it's safe, don't give anyone anything unsafe. Yeah. And the second thing is to, to do the same with a sort of rollout sort of pilot project, you know, a small amount of stuff. If you're rolling out things geographically, you start with a pilot project. So if you have 30 offices, you try your new software or your new product or your new printer in just one of those offices. On Amazon, the equivalent is to put out maybe 10 or 20 units of a particular product and, and see if there's any kind of response. And, you know, only then are you aiming to start to to, prof, to roll out on uh, on a big scale and uh, go for profit. So that is the the way to go. So doing both is ideal, by the way. And you know, if you can make a profit whilst researching, that's perfect. You know, um, profit plus learning, if you like. But that I would say that's a bonus. But and the final thing to say the thing about don't obsess about profits the only way to fail in business really is to run out of money and i don't know who said that probably everybody who's wise ever cash flow trumps profit okay so don't worry about profit initially but think about minimizing risk to your cash pile and make sure you can afford the downside if it happens so rather than thinking oh but if i put this product out into the marketplace as a test um and i spend 500 dollars on that test I'm going to lose that $500. Well, that's one way of looking at it. But another way is to say, well, look, I've got $10,000 cash pile to put towards this product kind of category over the next 12 months with my proto, my my new or my potential Amazon business or, you know, or new product line, depending on where you're at. So in which case, then what matters is to minimize the downside risk to your capital. So if you spend $500 on one, two, three products, you spent $1,500 as a whole, and only one of them takes off, that's fine because you just plenty of money left in the kitty to go and you know then scale up on the working product if you put all your money into one product on the hope or expectation of profit and it doesn't pan out guess what if you're out of money you're out of business so again the mentality needs to be about iterating and learning from experience ultimately learning from the market which to put in real terms is real people buying your product or not buying your products liking your products or disliking your products in other words real people trying to use your product or trying to look for a solution and either thinking, yes, I believe you, that's called a sale, or no, I don't believe you, that's called they looked but they didn't buy, or I believed you, I bought it, and then I was disappointed, that's called breaking your promises, and therefore you need to either change the promises you're making, or you need to change the product. So quick summary of quite a few thoughts. I hope this is useful. I think it's a summary of quite a few things that have been crystallizing recently for me. Please go listen to the 10K Collective podcast um, on custom manufacturing, because that is directly relevant to this entire process and uh, keep listening to the amazing FBA podcast if you're new. But if you are a more advanced seller, you'll probably find the 10K Collective podcast is going to be more to your liking. It's geared to six, seven and eight figure sellers on Amazon. Thanks so much for listening. Great to speak to you. Exciting topic. I love this stuff because it's actually learnings from real life. This is not theory. It's, it's real life learnings. Uh, from real people who are making money in some cases, some cases on tracks of making money, and uh, or some cases they're experts assisting sellers to make real money. And uh, it's real actionable stuff. You can trust me on this because it's actually real. Trust me on this, I'm an Amazon seller. <laughs> and it's an Amazon podcast. It must all be true. I mean, in the end, you've got to run this stuff past the filter of common sense. But I think you'll find it very, very hard to fault this. Uh, if you think about it, it's common sense. And actually, if you look at what real people do, um, serious companies, people who do really, really well, this is what they do. Talk to the customer. Who knew? What a crazy idea. Thanks very much for listening. Speak to you in the next show.